Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager, my home, my dog, my fireplace, my life. Welcome. This is called the Fireside Chat. I do it every week, and it's very important to me, and it's become important to a lot of people, so that's a great combination. I just talk spontaneously from my heart and my mind. One without the other is a problem, but both are important, and, and they work in tandem. You're in good shape. And I take your questions and fascinated by your reactions on, uh, on the Internet. Some of you said that you uh, have discovered this and then binge watch. Two comments on that. First, it's a great idea. Uh, what I said in the first hundred are just as important as what I might say today. I, I, so, and very little is dated. This stuff hopefully will be, will be viewed for a long time. Uh, the other is that uh, it, you can't really binge watch all of them. <laughs> we were figuring out mathematically. What are there, 130? How many are there? Yeah, 100 and uh, almost 130. Oh, 100, almost 130. So that's, they're, they're each about a half hour. That would be 65 hours. Uh, so clearly you would need to sleep, eat, and uh, relieve yourself, so you, it's, uh, it's not fully possible. But I do hope you watch a lot of them. These are important uh, chats, these fireside chats. So I always begin with something on my mind, and I'll tell you what's on my mind. This is a story from the University of Montana, and they had for Martin Luther King Day in the U.S., and I say in the U.S. because many of you are not in the U.S., for Martin Luther King Day, they had a, an essay contest. The, the Department of African American Studies, or Black Studies, I don't know the exact name, uh, sponsored it, uh, write an essay on the legacy of Martin Luther King, what that means to you. So uh, they, they announced this, and the winners were announced, and massive objections, I mean massive uh, uh, arose as a result of, uh, and before I say as a result of, let me tell you what the objections were. This was racist. So on my radio show, I actually uh, s said to my listeners, if you can guess why, why something racist happened, you know, you deserve an award even my producer, who is very bright and who does this every day with me, had no clue. My engineer had no clue. Why was it racist? There's a huge important lesson here to be learned on the absurdity of this charge. Because the four winners were, were white, white females, as it happens. So now you're probably wondering, why is that racist? It was for the whole college, the whole university, and it was, what does the legacy of Martin Luther King mean to you? So number one, I would think you would want white students to respond to the legacy of Martin Luther King. That's the best thing you could get. What if only black students responded? That would be a real problem. So you would think there would be celebration of the fact that white students submitted essays. Now, why did four white girls or four whites win? Because only whites submitted essays, as it happens. Montana is overwhelmingly white, and the university is overwhelmingly white, so you would imagine you will get a lot more white responses than non-white responses. <laughs> It was so bad, the, uh, the, uh, the Department of, of, of uh, Black Studies put up the, the pictures of the winners. They took them down. The pressure was so great, they took them down. The girls got death threats. <laughs> I'm laughing, but you should cry. This is beyond sick. It's beyond sick. You couldn't make this up. It's so sick. Uh, but the, the reason I'm raising it is because the, there were huge lessons to be learned from all of this. 
So four girls write on the legacy of Martin Luther King. No black submitted an essay. These were the best essays. The girls won. The pictures were immediately taken down because of the attacks that it's racist that whites won the contest. What is all of this show? It shows that what we have here is something I have so often noted. There is so little racism in the United States of America that the left searches for it. Why do you think there are so many hoaxes like the famous or infamous Jussie Smollett hoax, the black actor who said he was attacked by uh, Trump supporting whites at 2 a.m. when it was zero degrees Fahrenheit uh, in Chicago, in the, at, at, and uh, the, he made the whole thing up. He made the whole thing up. He engineered the whole thing. Oh, the vast majority of the cases, to the best of my knowledge, the the vast majority of these famous racist cases of a swastika on a black kid's dorm room or a noose hanging uh, on the campus were actually hoaxes. If you Google race hoaxes on campuses or race hoaxes in America, uh, you will find incredible number of them. Incredible. I I keep a list in my own files uh, uh, under my uh, research category. And why, why, why would anybody have to make a hoax? because there's so little racism. You think Jews in Germany in the 1930s ever invented anti-Semitism hoax? hoaxes? The idea is, is a bad joke, because there was so much real Jew hatred. No Jew had to make up any instance of anti-Semitism. But they make up a lot of instances in the United States because there's so little. There's so little that the University of California has issued a list of microaggressions. You could see that on the internet, or I wrote an article on it. Check that out. The, the list of micro, they're called microaggressions. Why are they micro? Because they're so tiny, the people who say it don't even know it's racist. For example, here's an example of, of what the University of California has declared racist. If somebody says, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one race, the human race. Now, that's the most anti-racist comment you could make, correct? That's racist. It's, it's, it's an upside-down world, upside-down morally and intellectually. Why do people look for racism? This is the question. Ever since I was a kid, I always everything I, I heard, I would ask why. Because the why is the more interesting question to me. Why? Why would people live and breathe the desire to find racism where it doesn't exist? Or sexism? Or any of these isms? Why? Because it gives their life meaning. That's why. That's it. That's the answer. The left, not liberals, always make a difference, derives meaning from finding or manufacturing evils to combat. Every one of us would like to fight or at least have somebody else fight evil. I do. I hate evil. That's why I I 100% supported the killing of Soleimani, this blood-soaked, bloodthirsty, uh, mass terrorist who is the second most powerful man in Iran. That is fighting evil. Fighting racism on campuses is make-believe evil. When you don't fight real evil, you fight make-believe evil. This is a huge lesson in life. And that's what the left does. They're all make-believe evils. The rape culture on campus, we all know that's a fraud. And I'll tell you how we know it's a fraud, because parents send their daughters to campuses. They don't believe it. Would you send your daughter to a place where she had a one in four chance of being raped? In some cases, they say one in three. Of course not. Of course not. You play Russian roulette with your daughter getting raped? 
Nobody believes it. it, 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 it it's, it's a fraud. It's as big a fraud as the campuses are racist. America's racist. But this gives these people meaning. They have, they live in what we call the post Judeo Christian world. They have rejected the traditional sources of meaning in the West and certainly in the United States. In the United States, there's a vast amount of meaning that came from being a Jew or a Christian, affirming the, the Bible, religiosity, God, the Ten Commandments, all of that, the wisdom of the Bible, and from America. America gave people a lot of meaning. This was, as Abraham Lincoln said, the last best hope on earth. That was, that's what animated Americans. God, we're, we're going to be, with all our faults, and of course Americans have faults, the Americans are human, but with all our faults, we're going to try to make a place that is, that is the symbol of freedom, which is why France gave America, no other country, the Statue of Liberty, because America has always stood for more liberty than other places. It's a beautiful ideal. But uh, America is now considered just awful by the left. Religion is considered awful. Christianity is considered awful. Judaism is irrelevant. And that's what's happened. So they get meaning from fighting make-believe evils. This fills their lives. And that's why the University of Montana was attacked for white girls winning the Martin Luther King essay contest. It's actually a beautiful thing that whites wrote about this. Hardly racist. And here's the point. If, if blacks had won it, they would have said, look at that, that's racist. Only blacks take Martin Luther King seriously. No matter what, they will come up with that line. Okie dokie. The search for meaning is a biggie. All right, it's time for a video question, which we open with. And here we go. Hi there, Dennis. Uh, Prayer First member John here. And I was wondering, why don't conservatives embrace the take care of the climate agenda more? Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there were two issues here, and I, I don't know if you meant take care of the climate or take care of the environment, because you showed an environmental sign uh, on the uh, on the recycling can that you uh, that you showed in the in the video. Uh, so uh, actually, we'll be having at PragerU a video on that very subject: how conservatives care about the environment tremendously. Why wouldn't we? I mean, just on purely selfish grounds, do I like dirty air? Do conservatives? I mean, think think of the absurdity. Do, do, why don't conservatives care about dirty air? Because we love breathing dirty air. It it, just, it fills us with joy. And 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 dirty water. Oh my God! If I have a clean water and a dirty water, I'll take dirty water any time. I mean, it, the absurdity of it. And what do we want to give to our children and grandchildren, if not if not a clean environment? So it's. That's a non-issue. So the climate issue is very complex. That's a much more complex issue. We actually, uh, if I'm speaking for most conservatives, I can't speak for all, we have an answer if you believe, and I'm ambivalent, I don't know the answer. I do, I do believe the earth is getting warmer. Uh, I don't know if it's, if it's catastrophic. I don't believe it's catastrophic. Uh, I think that the left's record of Hysteria is such that I find it a little difficult uh, to trust them on the latest hysteria. They've been saying we have 12 years uh, for Earth to survive since 1980-something. Every 12 years is a new 12-year lease, and we're doing quite fine. More people are living more healthfully, eating better than in the history of the planet Earth. So uh, I don't share that hysteria. But we have an answer if it's indeed, if carbon dioxide is the problem that uh, uh, the, uh, the hysterics say it is, or even the, the non-hysterics, if, if, if there are such people, uh, we have an answer. It's called nuclear power. Completely clean, 100% clean, and 99.9% .9 safe. Nothing is 100% safe, not crossing the street, not driving a car, 
uh, not waking up and going into the bathtub, uh, where a tremendous number of accidents happen. In, 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 uh, more, more people die, let's put it this way, more people die each year uh, from falls in the bathtub than from nuclear power. 70% uh, of France is powered by nuclear power. Any problems there? No. So, and, and if you cite to me Chernobyl or whatever, it, it doesn't answer the question. Chernobyl was run by the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union couldn't care less about their, the human beings under their uh, jurisdiction, and they built a completely faulty thing. It, it, it's, it's absurd to use Chernobyl as an example. And in any event, far fewer people died from Chernobyl than anybody ever would have imagined. So uh, nuclear power is the answer. Anyone, this is, this is really important, anyone who says we have 12 years to, to exist or, we have, or, or uh, carbon emissions present a, uh, an existential threat to Earth who is not an advocate of nuclear power is a phony. I, I, I stake my reputation uh, on that assertion. You really believe there are 12 years left and you won't, you won't advocate nuclear power? Then there's something wrong with you. There is. Then you don't take your own word seriously. Nuclear power is the answer. You're a fraud. And I never, almost never use that word. And I'm sorry to get angry. But because they're, rent, they're going to make havoc, the, these, these people, uh, with only uh, turbines and, and solar power, which cannot possibly... Uh, uh, give us the power that we need. And the turbines are a very big problem in and of themselves. I mean, just on one little thing, but it's not so little. I mean, uh, the millions of birds that these things kill, and many of them uh, endangered species, all of a sudden the left doesn't care about endangered species. It's fascinating. But, it, but they're, and, and they're ugly, and, and they, they, they don't work nearly as well as people wanted. But there is something that works. 70% of France is powered by nuclear power. It's clean. And the latest uh, incarnation is cleaner than ever. And it handles the problem of nuclear waste even better. There is an answer if you really believe that carbon emissions are going to uh, uh, destroy the world. So I can't believe, it's like if you were, if you were drowning, if you, were really, if you really thought you were drowning, your sip, ship has sunk. And along comes a boat, and you say, no, 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 I, I don't want to be saved by that boat. Then clearly you don't believe you're drowning. Okay. Hope that dealt with it in part. Next, Jeremiah 13, Eureka, California. Hi, Jeremiah. Hello, Mr. Prager. One of my New Year's resolutions was to watch every fireside chat. Yeah, the man. I know it is a cliche now, but Pat Otto for me. It is a cliche, but I pat him a lot, by the way. I pat him much more off camera than on camera, just for the record. But uh, he's the man. Do you think public schools should teach creation? God bless. Thank you for your time. What does it mean, teach creation? I assume you mean teach the, no the, the biblical notion that God created the universe. Now, I, th I don't know why it is a bad idea to teach what science knows and to teach what science doesn't know so, and cannot know. Science cannot know why there is a universe. Science can tell you a lot of things. I love science. I think we need to learn science. Uh, every religious person I know thinks we need to learn science. Most of the great uh, scientists of the past were religious in any event. I don't know what would be so bad if there were a class taught about the biblical view of creation. That was the view that formed the Western world. That there is, in fact, something that transcends nature that made nature. Nature can't make itself. And science will never answer how it all started. They can't answer. It's not an answerable question. Science can tell us a lot of things. I am alive thanks to science. Uh, my... my uh, most many people I know are alive thanks to science. I love science. But there are limitations. It can't answer a lot of things. It can't answer how we should live a life. Science can't tell you what's good and evil. 
Science has nothing to say about good and evil, which is the thing that bothers me the most about life, because there's so much evil. Science can't give you wisdom. It can give you knowledge. And we need that knowledge, and we should use it. But, uh, but the Bible gives you wisdom. Read my, and I beg you, I, you, whether it's you in Eureka or any of you watching, if, if I interest you, please read the Rational Bible. My, my commentary on the first five books of the Bible, two volumes are out, Genesis and Exodus. And I explain this, obviously, in the Genesis chapters. Why it's so important, how it changed the world. It gave the world purpose. If God didn't make the world, if it's just here, then it's pointless. It's purposeless. I mean, that should be, that should be obvious, correct? What's the point? We're all a coincidence. I am a coincidence. Jupiter is a coincidence. Any, any co galaxy is a coincidence. The furthest star from Earth is a coincidence. After all, I'm made of stellar matter. Why am I more important than a star? It's much bigger than I. Only if there is a creator in the final analysis. So yeah, I don't know why that shouldn't be taught. It's not taught as science, but it might, might be taught, hey, this is the roots of the Western world. That's pretty important. Richard, 37, Malaysia. Hi, Richard in Malaysia. Dear sir, I am from Malaysia. How have you been here? Yes, I have been. I've been to Kuala Lumpur, and uh, I had a great time, as it happens, and I would love to come back. I enjoy watching your fireside chat every week, ever since I got to know your YouTube page. Wonderful. My question is, what is your take about Aliyah? I'll explain that. And would you consider making one? Thank you for your answer. Aliyah is when Jews move to Israel. That is the term for it. And uh, I considered it very, very strongly in my, uh, in my youth. I, I did very, uh, I, I, I thought I might even do it. It was such an exciting idea. After 2,000 years, the Jews have their homeland back. There's nothing comparable to it in, in world history. Uh, Christians find this incredibly meaningful too because it means God keeps his promises. So it's a, it's a big deal. But ultimately, uh, I am deeply attached to the United States and, and this experiment in liberty. Not that, not that Israel doesn't have liberty, but this is a unique experiment. People of every background, e pluribus unum, from many one. I, I love this country very, very much. And I am grateful to this country very, very much. And I believe its value system is, is universal. And I, I wrote a book on that, Still the Best Hope, Why American Values Can Be a Universalized and Are Great. If you watched the, uh, the, uh, if you watched the fireside chat where I interviewed Prager Force young people from how many countries, 12 countries was it? 11. 11 countries. And that was, uh, that was powerful. And they, they, they know these values are applicable to their countries. How are we doing on time? Thank you. Mikael, 20, from Uppsala, Sweden. Hello, Mr. Prager and Otto. God, I'm surprised they're even saying Mr. Prager. Now it's going to soon be Hello, Otto. And your friend, Dennis. The frequency of Otto. The, the frequency of Otto is rising. That is absolutely correct. What do you do on the Sabbath? What do you think about Christians and Gentiles celebrating slash observing the Jewish Sabbath? As a Christian, what can I do to observe the Sabbath and keep it holy as the Bible commands? Shabbat shalom to you and the Prager family. Thank you very much. So how old are you? 20-year-old in Sweden. Boy, what a pleasure to hear from a Swede who, who actually thinks the Bible is worth living. Uh, I, I, you have had a very sensitive issue here. And again, please read, uh, in this case, my Exodus commentary, because I spent a great deal on the Sabbath commandment. The Sabbath is the only ritual commandment in the Ten Commandments. That's how important, if you believe it is from God, the Ten Commandments, God thinks it is. That's a big deal. And yet, half the Christians, and I'm talking clergy, Catholic and Protestant, that I have asked, are you, do you feel obligated? Do you think Christians are obligated to keep the Sabbath? 50% have said yes. 50% have said no, and I've asked it for decades. It's a very interesting question. 
Of course, the Sabbath was a big deal in Christian life. Of course, it was Sunday, the Lord's Day, as it is called, as opposed to just Sabbath, because it's, it's the day for Christians of the resurrection of Christ. And so they would, but they would have a Sabbath on the Lord's Day. In fact, the word for, uh, for Sunday in Russian, Voskresenya, means resurrection. So it, it's, it, they're obviously uh, tied together in, in the Christian mind. But a lot of Christians understand uh, that there's another thing at work here. It's not contradictory, just another thing. In six days, God created the heavens and the earth. You don't have to take it literally. But if, what if it said six, 600 million years? So what are we going to do, have a Sabbath every 600 million years? Obviously, it's going to have to be in, 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 in a day format. So, and on the seventh day, God rested. And if you keep the Sabbath, it is a sign that I created the heavens and the earth. That's a very powerful uh, uh, statement about the power of the Sabbath. I would just tell you this. Of course, I think you should uh, take it seriously, either Sunday or Saturday. Of course, I think you should. It's life-changing. That is a day of the week. Do you know, I, I don't even read the newspaper. I don't, I don't watch TV or listen to the radio. I, I, I tune out of the world. I spend it with, if my family is around my family, if, and, and always with my friends. I have, had, uh, I have every Friday night a Sabbath dinner, and every, uh, and, uh, or virtually every, sometimes I'm on the road and, and I'm speaking, but I, but I am uh, on, on Saturday uh, with the same couples for the last uh, 25 years. It, it, it's it's life-saving. I know that it, it, it's a reason for my health, my vigor, my love of life to tune out for a day, a week, and just spend it with friends and relatives. It, it is an astonishing a gift in my life. It is, it is, it is so life enhancing to, as it were, leave the world. What, read on the internet. This is the beauty. There's a lot of bad things about the internet. There's a lot of good things. If it weren't for the internet, you wouldn't know me. <laughs> so it's, it's a big deal. Uh, but uh, I've written a thousand columns and one of them is called Higher Than the Angels. And I think you'd love it. Just put in Prager higher than the angels, and it'll come up. It's happened about, I don't know, 20 years ago, whenever it was. And I, I was offered tickets to a very big baseball game for the team that I was rooting for. And I was so excited because it was the playoffs and, you know, championship series. But uh, I learned it was a Saturday afternoon, and I didn't go because I, I don't go to uh, sports events on, uh, on my Shabbat, on my Sabbath. And uh, I explained why in this article. I think you'll find it very moving. And to have this day, what it does for family life, what it does for friendship, nothing, nothing else does it like this does. So, yes, I think you should take it seriously. Tim, 55, Coral Springs, Florida. Hello, Dennis and Otto. Otto, don't let this go to your head. This morning I was listening to your discussion on what have you said in private. While I agree with most of your premise, I have always felt that what you say in private is a window to your true beliefs. Please explain why that is not significant to you. Well, first of all, this is really, I have a column on this subject, what you say in private. It's on the internet. Just wrote it. Just published. But there's another... I didn't discuss this in my article, but here's a very interesting thing. I don't really care what your true beliefs are. I care what your actions are. As I wrote in my column, if you don't like Jews, let's say you don't like Jews, but you treat Jews well, I don't care. I mean, it, anyway, it's a, it's a silly thing, like a group or don't like a group. There were nice Jews, not nice Jews. There were nice Christians, not nice Christians. There were nice Belgians, not nice Belgians. I mean, it, so it's, it's so, somewhat of an odd thing. Uh, so I don't really care your true beliefs. I care your true actions. A lot of people have wonderful beliefs, and they're awful human beings. This notion of the, of the well, I know you if I know your beliefs, isn't true. It's, it's one of the most 
common misconceptions of the human species. I know you if I know your beliefs. No, you don't. You only know me if you know my behavior. That's all that matters. You, there are people who, oh, I love humanity, I love humanity, and then they treat people terribly, selfish and, and obnoxious. They have beautiful beliefs. That's, that's why people fell for communism. It sounded like a beautiful belief. So it slaughtered 100 million people. Oh, but it's a beautiful belief. Beautiful beliefs don't matter to me. Beautiful behavior matters to me. So that, the premise of the question, which is completely understandable, 90% of humanity thinks if they, if they know your beliefs, they know you. They don't. You are known by what you do. What was it in the New Testament James said? It's um, uh, faith without works is dead. Why is it dead? You don't, you don't believe just because you don't have works? That's right. That's correct. You think you believe, but you don't. Not if you not behave perfectly. Just behave well. I'm not. I'm not in the business of producing saints. I just want to produce good people. So this is part two of my private thoughts. Not only do private thoughts and 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 statements not tell you a person's character, their beliefs don't even. Only your behavior tells you tells me who you are. That's it. The number of people who, who, uh, who believe in good things and do, and do terrible things? Oh, my God, it, it, it's legion. We have, we have overdone it on, gee, well. Uh, it, it even take the racism thing from the beginning. All whites are racist. Let's say it's, first it's nonsense. But let's say it were true. Let's say it were true. The question is, how do they act? That's all that, that's, I would feel that about any group. We are, uh, we are spectacularly naive and, and, and foolish because wisdom doesn't mean anything anymore. Where are you taught wisdom? Elementary school, high school, college? Is there one course on wisdom that you've taken? It's pretty rare. They don't even offer them. You're, uh, t you're told what preferred pronoun to use but you're not given any guidance about what matters. This notion that your beliefs tell us who you are is just wrong. All righty, everybody. What is it time to show people, listen to this, I just found out about this right before the broadcast. So apparently, I uh, just want you to know, what is it, Prager, U Prager United? Yes. So is he getting, uh, is, he, is, is Otto now wearing a Prager U hat? Did he shake it off? He oh, no, where's the hat? Let me give me, give me the hat here. In front of him. There it is. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I didn't even know about this. So if people, what, they give $35 a month, mm -hmm. which in America is tax deductible, by the way, because it's, it's, a, it's a 501c3. Oh, so look at that. A very good and very sweet little nice letters, PragerU. And you just put it on. And Otto, Otto, you're the good man. You're the good man, Otto, yes. Now, Otto is not used to wearing a hat. Uh, we, didn't, we did not rehearse this. This is clear. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Anyway, okay. Anyway, now you know he's not a stuffed animal. He often doesn't move at all during the broadcast. And <laughs> some people might think he's stuffed. He's not. Uh, all right, so there, more or less. It's a beautiful hat, actually. I didn't realize. Really nice. And there's something else in this. This is a typical box. You get a different box four, four times a year? That's a lot of stuff for $35 a month. So what else is there? There's a, there's a thank you note. That's nice. Ooh. And our colors, the official colors, Prager U socks. Now, let me tell you something. If you want to attract somebody to your life, a Prager U sock is going to do it. And the hat is also wonderful. And with the hat, I mean, it's, you're, you're devastating. I mean, this is sexy, aside from everything else. Anyway, this is great. So this is made in the freaking USA. <laughs> Who comes up with this stuff? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's cute. 
youth. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, they need a, 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 and I'm 6'4", we need a, we need a bigger sock for me. But anyway, it is beautiful, and a lot of guys are now, and women, uh, are wearing these colorful socks. So anyway, we just want you to know, how do people do the 35? A lot of people do it. Do you know that half of what comes into PragerU is from small donations? It's not from uh, uh, wealthy donors, whom we thank, and God bless them. And I, I don't have any problem about having a wealthy donor help us advocate uh, goodness and Judeo-Christian values uh, and, and loving your family and, and your spouse. I mean, we, we advocate pretty good things. So, uh, and, but you should know uh, it's a lot of people who help us uh, to, to uh, spread good words. So what do they do? Yeah, Just I'm go to PragerU. You, no, no, we go to Prager.com and then what is yeah. subscribe? Well, what, what do they click? Um, there's a donate button. There's a this. donate button. Okay. This is nice. This, it's a classy organization. Learn, think, share. Is, he, is it off or is it falling off? All right. Well, for Otto, that's not bad. I'm, I'm not going to give him a hard time. Anyway, listen, folks. It's great to be with you. I love to hear from you. Please do not only the formal questions, but if you have reactions. And I'd love reading them. Thanks. I'm Dennis Prager, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep these fireside chats free, please do by donating to PragerU.